Once upon a time, there was Protoss, and there was the earliest cheese. The probe ventured on the map at an extremely early time, and Zerg had no idea. This is analysis of dealing with proxy gateway, zealots, and other various and sundry gateway units. This is probably the most common location for proxy gateway. First overlord goes across the map to see if the opponent took a base. Second overlord, I like pathing it down here, so you can see if there are any early can rushes being set up. And then going this way to check for any proxy gateway. Just so happens that we'll scout it at a pretty early time. Now, thinking about this scenario, Protoss is investing pretty much all of their minerals on our side of the map, which on the one hand means they'll be able to attack very soon. On the other hand, it means they will have very little defense on their side of the map. So the solution, three spines behind your mineral line, pulling off gas, ling speed, it's not very helpful. Slowlings are already faster than zealots on and off creep. So this investment wouldn't really make much progress against proxy gateway zealot. Spines, however, are incredibly strong in the early game, and if you place them behind your worker line, it's a big pain for the zealots to try and do damage to your economy. So rather than use units, army units, to attack the zealots and deal with that threat directly, we can just put pressure on the Protoss side of things. So I'm making links, about 10 to 12 links, and just sending them to the opponent, forcing them to divide their forces, divide their attention, and sort of defend against the proxy gateway by attacking. So the zealots are put to a decision. Do you chase the links all the way home to protect your probes? They station one zealot here, which that's one less zealot that could have been attacking. This particular instance of a proxy gateway, they built three. Four gateways would be totally all in. With three, they can afford to take some gases, take a cyber core, and kind of tech up. So it's a heavy pressure build rather than a full and complete cheese. I made a fourth spine. This will allow me to divide the spines between my bases, so I'm safe against depths kind of being shaded back and forth. And then eventually taking link speed and a roche warren as a follow-up. But with an earlier second base, I can pretty easily take a big economy advantage. Right now I'm making queens and drones and spines rather than lings. Before ling speed is done, slow lings are pretty bad against this type of protoss pressure. Queens and spines are incredibly strong. So I'm making queen spine drone until Ling Speed and the Roach Warren are done, and then I'll make Roach Ling Ravager. Nice spine placement here. Zealots can't surround it very well. I moved one spine down from the main, but I'm keeping one up here for this type of shenanigan rate. Ling Speed, Roach Warren, second gas. Now I'm making Roach Ling and morphing the Roaches to Ravagers. Ravagers get a speed boost as soon as you make them, so it's a really nice unit to make on hatchery tech. I put two links on these proxy gateways, they'll eventually clean them up, and then the rest of my army can go attack. I put some links to break these rocks. I don't know if that was actually a great move, but it does sort of distract the opponent and give them something to deal with. Behind this, I'm taking a third base, and it's sort of regressing into a normal macro game. A lot of cheese scenarios will sort of get back to a more typical scenario of two base Protoss versus three base Zerg. So whenever this pressure is being put on, sneaking in drones is a really nice way to take an advantage. Protoss has got a pretty decent economy. They have full saturation on minerals at the natural. Their main is fully saturated, but it's mining out. That's one of the differences between a normal macro game and a cheesy game, is the main base will be mined out, and they can basically transfer workers from the main to the third, 
and stay on two base economy the whole time. So I'm taking Lair, plus one ranged attack, Roach speed, Roachling Ravager are really good against Stalkers. So Ling Ravager pushing back this wave. Hydralisk is also a very efficient unit against masses of Stalkers. Taking gases at your third as soon as you reach one ba or full mineral saturation at a base. If you take your gases too early, like earlier than full saturation at a base, it injures your economy a little bit and you're not going to be able to sustain that production and afford your fourth base and your macro hatch if you want to build a macro hatch. Zerg is really good at producing units quickly, so it's nice to trade units against the Protoss army if you have a pretty cost-effective composition and remake units at home. So I had an earlier third, I have lots of larva, I can trade Roachling Ravager against Stalkers and it'll end up being better for me. Another engagement. That was pretty crucial, so Splitting some units on either path will give you a better surround. Box microing your army in half is a really good skill to develop regardless of which composition you're going for. I moved one of the spines to my fourth base and I'll build a spore as well. There is a dark shrine, so I want to make sure all my bases have detection. I also want to make sure I have overlord speed and multiple overseers with my army. If you just have one, they can snipe it and kill it, and then you're in a bad spot. So a little bit of redundancy is quite nice. And you can also drop changelings and get good vision of the Protoss army. Cool. And that's basically how you deal with Proxy Gateway, and then get into a normal macro game after that. Not too much of note for the rest of this. Just Stalker Sentry versus Ling Hydra. Hydralisk attacks like this normally aren't super great because Adepts are so common, but since this Protoss player went for Stalker Sentry Immortal, Ling Hydra is a good bet. <laughs> 